If you could just ask yourself these questions before you pick a supplement. Before anybody tries to sell you something, if you could just go through this hierarchy, I'm going to save you a lot of money. And I'm going to save you a lot of other issues because synthetic vitamins actually increase cancer rates. Synthetic vitamins increase cancer rates. So does, does the supplement represent an essential nutrient? Here's what that means. Essential in terms of biochemistry means this, that your body can't make it, so you need raw materials. In other words, your genetic blueprint can't make it. It needs some materials from the outside. That's what essential means in biochemistry. So why would you ever supplement with something that your body can make on its own? Here's what they're generally going to do. They're going to throw a very long biochemical pathway on there, and they're going to say, oh, your body could never make this on its own. It's too complicated. Meanwhile, if you actually knew the truth, your body's doing 50 trillion of those amazingly complicated biochemical pathways per second. So don't let, let, ever let anyone say that. So if it's not essential and your body can make it, why would you buy it? Make sense? Pretty simple. Is there a dietary deficiency of the nutrient? Is there a dietary deficiency? What that means is this, is that if it's an essential nutrient, it means that you have to regularly consume it, unless you can store it in your fat, which isn't true for most things. Most of the things that are essential we require on a regular basis. Understand that? So is it deficient in your diet? Because if it's not deficient in your diet, even if it's essential, if you can get it from, you know, if you're already getting it in your diet, why would you add more? Here's what I can promise you. The research is clear. Once you're sufficient in a nutrient, more isn't better. More isn't better. That's clear. Okay? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I hate the fact when they take blood levels and tell you because I don't care what your blood level is. Because your blood level is a snapshot in time. What I care what your dietary patterns are. Because if you don't have this nutrient in your diet regularly, maybe I could take your blood and you just had a whole bunch of it last week because you know it was blueberry season and you eat blueberries once a year. Do you know what I mean? So all of a sudden you ate a box of blueberries and you spiked this thing and I took it. But my point is I don't care what your blood says because it's a snapshot in time. I care what your lifestyle patterns are. I care what your eating habits are because if it's not a regular part of your diet and it's essential nutrient, it means you're in trouble. Agreed? Great. Can we get the supplement with a reason, reasonable dietary alteration? The rule of thumb is this. Food's always a million times better. Consuming it as a food is a million times better because there's no such thing as a nutrient. There's only nutrient complexes. There's no such thing as an isolated nutrient in life, only in a supplement bottle or on an advertisement. There's nutrient complexes. And the, uh, the act of getting in a food is better for a million reasons. One is you have to chew. The proprioception from your jaw stimulates your brain. It stimulates your gastrointestinal a system to produce better enzymes. You have to go shopping for it. You, I mean, there, you see the color of it. You, you know, you have a more of a connection to it. There's all kinds of reasons why food's better. So if you can get it with a reasonable dietary alteration, never supplement. You know, and I have a supplement company. You know, why do I only have four supplements? Because, you know, I can't figure out how to make more? That's not why. It's because there's only four that stand up to the, to the criteria of, of, of actually being something that you would require in a supplement form. Everything else you can easily get elsewhere, 100%. So is a supplement in the form found in nature or is it biochemically altered by humans? As soon as someone says to you, well, we've made it better, I would ask you this question. How many times have we improved nature? How many times have we ever improved an ecosystem? You can't. So if you're going to, just let me give you this example. Let me say you took olives and you squeezed them into a bottle and got olive oil. Could you make that better in a biochemical laboratory by changing the fatty acid ratio or making it, you know, making it into the ester form or, you know, adding some ridiculous thing that doesn't ever come with olives in nature? Is there any way you could improve on nature in terms of what your genes require? Can you make something from nature more genetically compatible for your genes? Never. So don't fall into that trap. There's, if it's not, what you need to do is be guided by this rule. Is it in the most naturally occurring form possible? As soon as someone's telling you they improved it in a lab, they're lying. They're marketing and they don't have research for it. If they do have research, it's research against something that is so bogus in terms of what they're comparing to. Like somebody who doesn't have any nutrients of any kind or something ridiculous, I promise you. If it's, you can't improve on it, you can't make it more genetically compatible. So that's a big one. And then, here we go, last one. Is there a body of research supporting the effectiveness of the supplementation for health and prevention? I don't care how much evidence there is that taking that supplement increases those supplement levels in your blood. Who cares? That's meaningless. What I want to know is does it, what? 
either improve your performance or your health or what? Decrease your chance for illness. And so if there's not a, and a body of research doesn't mean they did a study. It means there's a body of research. And so what I'll tell you is this, is that there's really only four supplements that meet that criteria. And you don't have to use an A choice. I'm just telling you those four supplements, is that my, where's my laser? Right there. Omega-3, you cannot get enough omega-3 fatty acids in your diet because even if you ate fish every day, what you'd have to do, you're gonna get so t toxic with mercury and, and PCBs and dioxins that you just can't do it. Isn't that sad? That's how sick we are. That as humans, we actually pollute our oceans. Would you like to drink the water from the runoff of the farm that grows your children's fruit and vegetables? Can you drink the water from a stream within five miles of your house? Think about that for a second. If we literally are poisoning all the earth around us in the streams and the waterways, how can we think that we're gonna be okay? It doesn't make any sense. So you can't get enough omega-3 fish oil uh, or omega-3 fatty acids because unless you're eating, if you're eating exclusively wild game meat, then you can do it. And you'll have to eat the same amount of game meat that your ancestors ate, which is basically three times a day. Or, as, I mean, or gorge yourself on it until you basically lie around like a lion for two days and then do it again. You know what I mean? <laughs> And I always say, you know, should it be really lean meat? And I say, have you ever seen lions fight over the lean meat? <laughs> eat the fat first, why? Because that's where all the fat-soluble vitamins are stored. Now, I wouldn't eat the fat from, a, from an industrial cow, but if you, if you eat a deer, what should you do? You should get the fattiest parts, because that's where, and the, and the organs, why? Because it's in the fat where all the fat-soluble vitamins are. Look at the natives on the, on the plains of Canada that ate bison. I mean, do you think that they ate a copious amount of fresh fruits and vegetables over the winter? <laughs> So what sustained them? Fat. Fat is where the nutrients are stored. I got a lot of nutrients. Um, the next one is probiotics. What's a probiotic? Probiotic is the healthy bacteria in your gut. It's 80% of your immune system. It breaks down the food for you. It produces B vitamins. It protects you against the gram-negative pathogenic bacteria. I mean, the reality is, is that how goes the health of your gut bacteria is how you go, both physically and now what we're knowing is emotionally. It's very highly related to, to uh, schizophrenia and, and depression. And the vagus nerve, which actually they used to think was the, the motor nerve that fed from your brain to your organs, now they've realized that 90% of the, of the information that travels in your vagus nerve goes from your gut to your brain. And, that has, and, a, and how much mucus that you're producing, how fast you're turning over those cells, how inflammatory you are, is really based on whether or not you have those bacteria. We now know that humans consume, listen, one millionth the amount of probiotic healthy bacteria as our ancestors per day, a millionth. So you can't have a healthy, healthy ecosystem or immune system without probiotics, you just can't. And so unless you're fermenting your own food or eating raw meat, you're not gonna get them. So if you're, if you're fermenting your own food and eating raw meat, then you don't need a probiotic. If, if, you, if you aren't, then you do, simple. Organic multi, what I say, about, I don't like multi vitamins, but it should be a, like a kind of a, a phytochemical antioxidant from whole food. And it should be organic because if it's not organic, you know, when you concentrate those nutrients, when you dry the food, you also concentrate the pesticides and herbicides and everything else, so it's, it's gotta be organic. That's, that's really, really important. And, um, I would say that if you can't get that, then juice. And juicing isn't food. Juice is not a food. And, and don't worry about the glycemic index and all this crap that they tell you. It's ridiculous because it's a, it's, you, you measure glycemic, glycemic index by the meal you consume, not by each individual food. So if you drink you know, carrot juice and you know, spinach juice, you're like, oh no, it's too high in sugar. You know, run headlong into a pole and then, and then say, God, how can I be so stupid? And say, well, why don't I eat three almonds with it and I'll be just fine, <laughs> right? Because that's really how it goes. So, no one ever got fat from fruit. You know, all these people, are, I, 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 I'm gonna stay away from fruit. You know, and they're like, who ever got overweight from fruit? I stay away from the, I don't want too much fructose. Are you, just stop it, these things are just so insane. No one got overweight from fructose. But if you have like, you know, 16 melons after your beer and pizza and your, you know, high carb super pasta meal because you wanna be a good athlete, now nah, you're in trouble. But uh, otherwise you're just fine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this, I, I think that, um, is there food back there or is it over there? There's some fruit and veggies there. I really encourage you to kind of mingle around with the, with the people from CrossFit. If you're not a member of a CrossFit gym, I would really say to you, you know, I, I don't know what they do, but I think that you're allowed to just come and check it out. Is that true? Where are they? Aren't you allowed to sort of come and check it out? Yeah. So what I would say to you is come and check it out. And um, really, 
one more thing I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to give you a couple simple rules to do. One is fresh fiber first. These are some simple things that you can do with you and your children that are really going to change your life. Never have a meal without eating some kind of raw fruit or vegetable first. It complete, by the way, the more, the more fiber that you consume, the more raw fruits and vegetables you consume, the more you'll shift your natural probiotics, the more your bacteria. It's incredible what that will do to you. So never have a meal and never let your kids have a meal without eating fresh fiber first. Send them to bed hungry rather than feed them crap and don't let them, and, and, or, or allowing them not to eat that. You will never be a bad parent because you made your children eat fruits and vegetables. You'll be a bad parent because you gave up and fed them crap because you didn't want to listen to them cry and whine, which is them basically doing what? Beating you down and winning. <laughs> don't kill your kids, okay? Unless you're going to let them have a cigar and a glass of wine as well at dinner and give them your car keys, then I guess you're in charge. So don't feed your kids crap. So fresh fiber first. The other thing is never go a day without exercise. Every day you go, you know that if they take elite Olympic athletes and they miss exercise for one day, they literally can see the epigenetic changes in insulin resistance. Two days in a hospital bed, you start to lose bone, significant bone loss. Two days. It's incredible. So you can't go a day without activity. No matter what it is, you can't. Every day you go without activity is an act of suicide. It's not to look better, it's not to, be, to lose weight. Don't exercise for those silly reasons. Exercise, why? Because you, you literally can never, ever, ever protect yourself against all the things that you don't want in your life or get all the things that you do want in your life if you don't stimulate your genes with that. And here's the last one, is that every night when you go to bed, take a moment to be grateful for the day you had, for the something in that day that was, that was good. I know they might have had crap in that day, but never ever go get into bed and go to sleep without thinking of something that you're grateful for. And never get out of bed in the morning until you've thought about something that you're grateful for for that day. You can't be miserable when you're in a state of gratitude. It's not possible. And it takes seconds. So if you just did those things, if you just got some activity in your life every day, if you, if you made sure you were sufficient in those nutrients, if you had some gratitude every day, and you ate more fruits and vegetables, here's what I can tell you. 100% of obesity is gone, 70% of cancer is gone, 80% of diabetes is gone, based on the literature. With those simple things. And I mean, that's not CrossFit exercise. That's not really the whole and eight diet yet. That's just doing those small shifts, and that's what kind of impact you can have on your life.